Hey, hello everybody, welcome back to the Brush Sauce Theater Art Challenge. Uh, Adam Duff is once again joining me for this critique session. How are you? Uh, as you guys know, the challenge this month was Witch Hunt, and it's supposed to have a minimum of five characters, it's supposed to have kind of cultural, historical relevances. There's many periods throughout time that there were witch hunts, and we want to see evidences of this in the... Um, in the illustrations, yep. as I declared. So we're just going to go through. There's 22 submissions. I'm going to open a few at a time, and we're just going to kind of go through these systematically and in a timely manner. So, for that's good for all of you. Let's let's just get rolling. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. All right, Witch Hunt by. I'm oh, sorry, I missed the name already. I'm going to give Nick credit due. I thought it said Jerry. It is Jerry. Okay. Jerry. Yeah. Adam, you want to start us off? All right. Sure. Uh, well, um, first thing that kind of grabbed me with regards to Witch Hunt is the lore, that it actually mm -hmm. really captures the story of what a witch hunt was, where people were basically men running around accusing women of, of being witches and hanging them and burning them and all that kind of stuff. So I, I like that. The fact that you use a bit more of a Middle Eastern theme is cool. It kind of gives a bit of a twist to it. Yeah, it gives it that, again, that historical and cultural relevance is that yeah. there is a lot of variety. There's a lot of options to choose from. If you just, yeah. like, Wikipedia witch hunt, there's a lot of things to go from. Yeah. Absolutely. And I like I like this take. Yeah. I, I think this composition's working pretty good. I think it, it's almost a shame, like, the, the characters are, are tucked so far against the bottom edge. Like, that. I'm a composition slob. I know this. So, <laughs> snob, yeah. So, yeah. I, I, would, I get him a little bit more in the frame. I think it wouldn't be necessarily... I don't think it would be actually possible for them to pose like the way her legs are bent like that. Yeah. It's clear that although it's dark, so we don't necessarily notice that, but it would be beneficial to get a ref, image reference yeah. to that, see two people holding each other, hiding like that, because it, it's, it doesn't feel quite believable. Proportion and pose-wise, it's a bit off. It doesn't take away from it, though. I think that narratively, it's still you still captured the yeah, and that's what we're after. looking for here is that, yeah. that whole narrative aspect. And I do think it it hits that hits that mark pretty well. I think some yeah. of this stuff looks a little too clean, a little yeah. too chiseled, and I think this overall effect is almost too monochromatic. I mean, yeah. you have a nice, you have some nice warm lights. There's some nice cool lights, but again, there's not much for textural. Uh, yeah. cues on that. There's no wear and tear. There's no dust. There's no there's no grime and grit on the floor. And I think that's what will really help is filling yep. in some of these blank spaces with a little bit of those details. Of course, correcting the anatomy and I think it's going to work out really well. Yeah. But yeah, it's a very nice submission and I, I like I like where it's going. I can feel yep. the intensity there. Yeah. And really good storytelling too. Excellent. All right. Here we go. Uh, okay. Alex. Is Alec, Alex, Alex, Holyak. This is awesome. This is again on point and on theme. I think these references are really nice. Yeah. Uh, for me, I think the characters are standing out too, too much. Mm -hmm. Like they're universally like lit, like too, too, like they're just too bright yeah. for the lighting in the scene. See, like on your references right, right here, and even in this this movie still, or maybe that is a painting. I have no idea. Either way, right? Everything is fitting in there really well. And mm -hmm. I think if you just make these characters like a little bit darker and and you know key them down to fit with the lighting in the scene, I think it'll look uh, a little bit more believable. Yeah, particularly since they're also hiding in the shadow of the tree as well. Uh, it's got that Blair Witch thing on the ceiling. Adam, what's your thoughts on the composition and storytelling? For my like one gripe with this is that it's almost reading as two separate stories yeah. and images all at once, and I I. I Again, I think Alex was in the Hangout one Monday, and I think we started to talk about that. But yeah, I'm still feeling basically pretty the same. Well, I think because the the in the background, the guy with the torch is addressing the guy who's been hung, and it's a guy. It looks like a male who's been hung, mm -hmm. like some ranger or something like that's yeah. been hung. So that's a story in and of itself. And in the foreground, you have you have a witch who's about to sacrifice, I guess, a woman. Yep. And she's done some kind of sacrificial thing to her chest. And the the continuity of this story, it's kind of like like Tyler said, it's kind of split in two. Um, compositionally, I think that one of the things that that does not work as well is the dark hair on the dark tree. If you look at the reference with the yeah. the one, the second one to the right, you can see how we can get a clear silhouette of those characters, where she, she kind of merges into them a little bit too much with the dark hair. 
maybe putting a little bit of atmospheric fog between them, a little bit of mist to separate. Yeah, it from, you, you, know? you want to either way. You want to go light on dark or, or like dark on light is usually yeah. like uh, what you want to aim for. And it gets like having the face on the tree too. I think that's like pushing things a little too far. Like it just doesn't mm -hmm. need it. And when yeah. it, when in doubt, remove you know elements till you get get to the core you know of what you're saying see if you can subtly put up this cool ambient light yeah you know on your characters and i'm doing this very in a very sort of band-aid fix sort of way but you can still get like a little more lightness and brightness on things but it has to be handled in a fairly delicate and subtle you know subtle manner yep yeah, um, sure. I think that would be the key. But yeah, I, I'm still not... I, I mean, I like what you're going for. I see what you're going for. But I think it's also just trying to cram too much into a space. I would also add the tree, that creepy uh, tree with the face type of thing on it. You have a great... That tree is really satisfying to look at. You did a beautiful job rendering it, but then you put her head in front of it. So it's kind of a... It's It actually serves as a frustration because you've got a beautiful yeah. piece in that art. A very satisfying moment that you've overlapped. So I would keep those, I would split those apart so you could appreciate both uh, in their own respects, right? But I mean, like overall, really nice rendering and internal yeah. and, and internal consistency, Alex. I like yeah. I like where it's going. Um, yeah. yeah, it's just setting up composition and storytelling stuff. It's about finding priorities and then fighting to maintain them. Yeah. That, that's the trick. Things get covered, like, the more ambitious we get with things. Yeah. Hey, Jonathan. Yeah. Now this one, I really the story going on, the sexuality, the I the, like 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 I'm interpreting really, this at him like these guys were set out to hunt there. It's like yeah. man, but he's like, hey man, I didn't see these witches were a bunch of naked <laughs> beauties, and yeah. then they just kind of like join them. Yeah. I don't no, know what I accent that was that trying really to be, but captures that doesn't only capture the narrative, fantastic, and you are in a sense you're empathizing now more with the with the hunters themselves, yeah. where the witches are witches and they are seductresses, like. Just a piece of advice to anybody who's looking at this, all the lore, like, you know, you look at all this lore in the past, if there's a naked woman walking through the forest in the middle of the night, don't approach her, yes. okay? Pro Bad tip. idea. <laughs> um, but you captured that, these seductresses, these witches with the green hair, beautifully. Um, and it's a, there's a nice period piece, so it really brings in that lore. My qualm about this is you've taken this drone footage angle to it. You kind of distance yourself, and it would be a lot more immersive to be in there and have the woman seducing and being right there in well, on the dance, closer up into the action. I always feel that's, that's ideal as well, Adam. Is just like yeah. a, a, like this captures the scene really nicely. But again, I I am with you. Like I think it'd be better if we were in the perspective of yeah. a witch hunter sitting on the floor, like sticking a chicken leg in his in his mouth or something, just yeah. waiting for his turn. I yeah. and, you know, just a lot more cinematic. But uh, with that said, if, to make the best of what we have here, I think at best this would be considered a color rough. For most yep. standards, you, there needs to be a lot of time painstakingly rendering every little aspect uh, within the shot itself. Yeah, yeah. Because like it's very muddy in a lot of areas, very very heavy with the yep. brushwork, and you want to just delicate little <laughs> approaches to your brushwork. I think that's what I would definitely consider to to, yep. to work on moving here on out. Um, but yeah, your storytelling and you thematically, you absolutely nailed it. Yeah. Very much so. Which is funny, like that's the funnest part about doing these challenges and, and cr getting to critique them is some. There's like the technical, and then then there's the whole narrative side. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Here we got okay, uh, May. Mike, Mike Clever. Mike Clever. That's a name. So this is. I'm gonna just say this is kind of really creepy. Yeah, something very interesting going on here. They said they were working on their values. I remember that comment. A um, very original spin on the whole concept of the yeah, witch. You, you got the quote on the characters. These characters are all, I mean, they're all designed. They're, I think we're losing a little too much quality. I know that has to do with resolution and stuff. But, um, yeah, this is very interesting take on the matter. I'm just <laughs> not exactly sure what this story is. Nor do we, nor do we from a, just from an outsider's perspective, I would not make a witch hunt connection to this at all narrative. yeah and th and that's the problem and it's a child and he's kind of got that you know airbender look to him a little bit with the bald head um i'm not quite getting witch hunt out of this i love the originality but from a professional perspective since you're talking to two professionals if we were, if, if you were hired for a job to do an illustration based on this based on that narrative this would be a rejected concept because 
unless you're specifically asked to draw this, this missed the boat, this missed the mark, right? So it, do try to, when there's, a, when there's a directive, that helps you professionally to be able to force yourself, yes. force yourself to draw something you might not be accustomed to drawing. Force yourself to learn about things you're not familiar with instead of just completely going off the wall with your own take of it because we need to see witch hunt here, right? That would be, that's, it's an important point too. And, and that's going to be the case again with, with the witching hour image here as well. Like as beautiful as this is drawn, as cool as the composition is, like if, again, if I was just a bystander on the street, like witch hunt is not a vibe I would get from this. Mm. And it's almost like a cop out in a way that instead of like figuring out characters, period costumes and stuff, you decide to do a creature design and make it a bit, like a bit more of a splash image. Yeah. I could see a bit witch hunter, like a witch hunter, like a voodoo yeah. witch doctor, maybe, but not witch in the traditional sense of the word. So guys, yeah. whether this is the first time that's happened to the both of you in terms of missing a narrative mark, I recommend the simple thing is to post work in progresses yeah. in the Discord, in the Brush Thoughts Discord, and ask the community, hey, do you think this is going to hit the mark? Do you think Adam and Tyler is going <laughs> to bitch me out about hitting hitting the theme? And mm. that's the best way, because that's what you do in a client, right? You you send clients back and forth, and they'll approve it. Yep. And since we don't, re we really aren't here for that part. That that's something the community will tell you. you know, does this feel yep. witch hunt? And it sometimes just a, a dose of honesty is the best thing for all of us. You know, I would add to that, that. I would add to that and say, remember that when you're working for production, you're not the only part of the production. And there was a writer that they hired, or somebody that they hired to, to write, write the flavor the, text that goes under your yeah. card. And when that text does that not match your picture, excited and they said, "Ooh, I want to see that illustrated." And then the artist comes in and does whatever they want. That that doesn't only not get you get the job, but it also kind of pisses people off because you're like, we wrote it for you. Why didn't you draw it? And they would take, they would have a negative reaction to that. In our case, we don't care. It's not, we're not taking it personally, but just something to keep an eye out for because yeah. that could offend the director if you didn't bother to follow the narrative. Right. But yeah, your, your values are a lot uh, better uh, make here. So that yeah. I think you've hit that goal. I, I the, the color temperature gets a little flat and stiff. Your shadows, in the darkest areas, eh, they, they still get a little flat and stuff, but I think you're heading in the right direction. You have much nicer attention to texture and things like that. Mm -hmm. My mm -hmm. issue with, with this one is that it, it's very flat compositionally. It's it's just like a bunch of things hitting you in the face all at once, and there's like a lack of depth to it. And then you see this one textural pattern. We'll just touch upon this for a second, right? Like this one sneaky grass sort of look and feel to everything yeah. in the image. And it's just, it feels way too overdone and works. Like you, you have the same texture, the same shape on all the plants, on all the creatures. And it's like too much of one thing. Mm -hmm. Which is neat. It's definitely a strong design element, but l allowing the eye to rest from that pattern a bit will help to actually enhance it. And even having depth, exhausting, right? Depth in the image, like the, the background doesn't read necessarily too much as a background. I mean, this kind of reads as a foreground, but structurally, like there's not like a lot of value shapes to in a, in a simple yeah. way to, to help it pop. Yeah, 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 yeah. Right. So we get to that. I love that ambitious piece of artwork, though. Yeah, it is very ambitious. So yeah. Round two, and we're back. All right, so we're going to start us off with. J, uh, Julian uh, T's piece here. So this is really cool, really them thematically again on point. Uh, yeah, yeah. I I love like the I love the drama that's going to be going down in this. I think you have a yeah. nice set and framework here. I think you know if you, when you pull back like a little like a little bit of that gets lost. Like mm -hmm. a, a, and I would say this kind of comes down to, to colors and some of the lighting like it gets a little muddy uh particularly in places i think if you had stronger light and atmosphere throughout see like when i try to eye dropper like that, that one color it's picking everything and that thing, yeah. yeah and that's and that you know is a sign that things are a bit muddy because it it, the, mm -hmm. it can't tell the difference right between a lot of this stuff so see if like if you're cutting this out and this out yep. as a shape if you push that even further without like going too far like that would be like a good place to at least start and i think like for me like if that's like cool get like a, a little bit of green a little bit of blue in there and start bringing in some of that atmosphere so you can simplify right lots of the shapes uh and just yeah it, and I, it's just how the information is kind of presented a good a good piece of advice too for uh for doing nighttime imagery we tend to be too uh factual black on black because there's no light source yeah, uh, I recommend looking up how photographers would solve that using slow shutter speeds. So just look up, do a Google search for f nighttime photography, slow shutter speed, 
And you'll see how you can get a lot of light and detail in a dark scene by, by basically exposing the sensor of the camera longer. And you, do this, you want to do the same thing. You don't want to do black on black because you lose the image, right? Yeah, and, and it's, again, one thing that would really help with this is like that sense of uh, volume, volumetric lighting will really help. Yeah. Uh, I'm trying to look for example. I can't narratively, think of it. Narratively, this really hits the mark nicely. We can see the woman, the silhouette of the woman in the window, the, the, the men coming to hunt her down. It really brings us into the period and really gets to the point. It's that fear of her getting caught. See, which like really captures the essence of the time. Like with this right? guy in particular, right? The he has a warm highlight, but the green, if you actually eye drop the, the green's also warm. You'd mm. want to contrast by, by minimally going like with a deep saturated cool green. Yeah. You know, well you just flatten things when you have warm on warm or cool on cool. So mm -hmm. use color temperature, I recommend more to your, you know, more to your advantage. Yeah. And then you know, you're gonna add a blue, but a, yeah, a little bit just it's part of the mud. Uh, right. And like once you, you know, fix that, like in areas like this where you have direct light, you can get these, if if anything, subtly, right, like a little bit warmer. So I'm gonna do this very crudely to get the point here, but if you just go like a little warmer, a little more yellow in there, right? Uh, the brush is too big. I'm gonna go. I'm gonna have to go a little bit higher. And then you can get a little more details in these uh, areas of light as well so mm. see like it's just like it's just a subtle thing i'm not saying like you have to make it insane but see like having more subtle t's in the the, the temperature shifts will go a long way for this mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yeah that adds a lot actually that but really like overall you know, it's just a little rough on the edges you got to clear shapes of color uh, and a little bit cleaner details when you get into it yep all right uh bartek Bartek. All right. All right. We, 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 we had some words to share on this one. Not because it's probably the most, the most gratuitous of all of the images we've probably shown. Yes. Um, but we kind of debated over this one because we both agreed that from, from a technical perspective, this is a very polished drawing. And there's a lot of detail, a lot of, there's a lot going on here. Um, a lot to unpack. <laughs> And and you you weren't shying back from being very expressive with you know the 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 monster vagina with the horn coming out of it and the stabbing in the gut with the blood dripping that's that's all cool, but the qualm is, I mean I don't know I don't know about, enough about geisha or samurai culture as far as witchcraft is concerned. Yes, if that's the case. I have no clue how this ties into witch hunt. Because this is samurai in a geisha who's with a vagina, with a monster vagina. A demon. <laughs> so I'm, I'm lost. A demon, vag a demon vagina. Like right? it's going like too far. <laughs> it's it, it's speeding kinda, past the mark. <laughs> I feel this risks kind of like what we had mentioned before. You're kind of, you're you're, you want to take it too much in your own unique direction that it completely loses sight of the narrative, but maybe not because maybe there uh, we're not sure if there's a geisha samurai witch hunt lore that we're not aware of but even if it like even if it was and i was really familiar like oh yeah like witch hunt was a part of uh witch hunting was a part of this time the edo uh period right but I, i'm still not getting like witch hunt vibe necessarily from this right and yeah. i think that's what ultimately we decided because i mean this is like a straight up demon thing coming like you know like it's <laughs> it's pretty deep but with that yeah. said like a, a, a tremendous amount of respect to the technical ability you put into this like absolutely yeah. amazing don't yeah. get me i love it just it's not 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 ideal for this particular challenge yeah demon demon vaginas though you a plus man absolutely you nailed it i'm All gonna right. get me some tentacle porn <laughs> 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 all right paul which hunt this is paul g okay I like this more lighthearted take yeah. on this. This yeah. again, this is getting a little creative, but with still playing with that theme. Yeah. Um, so I think you you definitely kind of uh, qualify in that regard. Okay. So really cool. There's a little bit of cluster, like the the guy who's talking to the two young witches. I would I would the spacing is a little yeah. bit of an issue here. So like for instance, we want to clearly see the wanted sign, really nicely set up in t terms of visual storytelling, but open it up to expose a little bit more of that wanted sign because he kind of half hit it, and the wanted is a bit kind of bent around. 
The other guy, his expression is a bit confusing because mm-hmm. he's supposed to be identifying a witch, but he's kind of sitting there going, hmm, what's this? You know, it's kind yeah. of too much of a smirky uh, kind of look on his face. It doesn't quite hit the mark expression-wise. The girls and their the design, I love, yeah, love them so much. It's really even awesome. the character design of these these characters, the hunters, they're, yeah. they're really good. They're really cute. And they, I love the witchy poo side of the witches with the zigzaggy hats and stuff. I love that. I I'm love tr- that kind of Adam. I'm trying to bring it a little closer down to this because I think yeah. the the background got way too patterny, way too yeah. busy. Um, so I simplify it like you had here. It works so much better. And the last thing is like oh, virtually every color in this image maybe except for like this green i just kind of is very warm it it really lacks that cool balance to it Uh, there's not really a direct easy band-aid fix for that that i can do in like two seconds and fix it but i mean like i usually do with these things even if you wanted to warm up this foreground you know as it is i could still make this background feel at least a little bit cooler just by you know pumping up the blue uh but again that's a very band-aid fix to it and it's not gonna necessarily make it very subtle or you know eloquent in terms of like the overall execution you know of these things and and even so even if that's like you know really cool in the background this is warm you'd still want cool and warms throughout you know the uh uh, the foreground as well yeah. and there's just not a very quick way to do that there is there's ways but i mean it's going to just take time you know time and effort to so mm-hmm. see like this is maybe a little bit better way of getting some cool color at least back there a little bit and then desaturate some of that as well so it's all very, very saturated very warm and yeah. it needs some cool balances but you know overall aside from the things adam said i think this is this is a very charming very awesome yeah. take on the challenge so awesome yeah. stuff yeah really awesome i love it all right, Adrian's next. Might be the longest consistent running. Honest to God, man, Adrian, you never fail. Every single every single month, you're 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 on it, man. That's amazing, and your progression is it's a testament to your progression too. I mean, it's amazing. Um, this got a, it's almost got a bit of a it's got a bit of a cyberpunky vibe to it, almost. Yeah. I don't know. What I, I don't know. Why I'm feeling that. Uh, yeah. Okay. You hit so most of these requirements. I mean, you got the characters. There's definitely a witch, unequivocally. Again, the problem with this too, for me, like, is is the structure. It's it's your value structure. Mm. Um, it, it's it's a very common thing with your work. It makes your work, you know, for better and worse, very identifiable. Like, you always have some massive being in a, in a lot of them, but it's it, but it feels very one dimensional, like yep. very cut out, like no matter what genre of subject we're tackling like yeah like she's from an angle but she 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 doesn't feel like even as three-dimensional yeah. as like the night right here and then you know the, the the background i don't think is necessarily working for all this because think of it like she's right here she's got that's a pure black i you know i guess in, unless you're doing certain graffiti styles or very certain like ink aesthetics i just recommend if you're doing an illustration probably best to avoid that severity of black but again everyone's gonna have their own opinion on that but the problem is that black is here that black is up in the corner that black is like down here the black is completely sapping the life out of this yep there's no subtlety no subtlety the other thing i would say and this is something i um this is something i've noted with a lot of when i was doing my own critiques uh before a very, very common mistake is to light a character with nothing but rim light. And not only rim light, but the rim light isn't treated properly. That rim light should still wrap around certain forms and stuff. It's not going to be – if you get a perfect, thin, uniform line going down the edge of something, that's suggesting that that form is two-dimensional. It's a and maybe, And then maybe that, that's probably what was adding when I initially – the add, character feels like a flat light to cutout. A face, have that light wrap around her and maybe have a, a bit of a fill or a, a key and a fill light to bring out the dimension in this, the front. It You'd needs a key light, like yeah. some kind of direct light above to the um, – and on one of the angles from the left or yep. the right It because it, it's just like we're trying to interpret too much. Yep. And you can keep – you can use those colors and get witch like like greens and violets, you know, to bring in uh, – gr- uh, greens and purples to bring in that witchy feeling to it so it doesn't lose the dark vibe. But it's bringing out forms a little bit better. Now this. Hey, Tax. Tax is back. This is great. Oh, nice. Okay, cool. 
All right. Yeah. Okay. So this gets right into the lore. This gets yeah. right. Yeah. I, lo I love the storytelling here. And I decided love to omit the witch and, and just approach it like this. Yeah. Well, that's really cool. Yeah. 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 Uh, yeah, absolutely. And this makes, keeps getting me turned on to the idea of the, the announcement at E3, the Blair Witch game. Yeah. I'm, oh, yeah. That looks, looks really cool. Um, I'm wondering if creating more separation between some of these elements, because it, it does kind of all hit you right at the same time. Yeah. Right? You know, like having this guy and then like the foreground and like that guy, at yeah. least exaggerating some of the structure a little bit. Like, I know he simplified it and he set those back there, but I'm like... I'm just wondering, you know, if often enough, is that enough to, like, really just get a very quick read? Like, would this look really good, right, that small on a trading card? Yes, it's readable, but, yeah, maybe there is per perhaps, like, a little bit better of a solution. Mm. You know, like, just, just exaggerating more atmosphere. Particularly atmosphere. on a foggy day, you'll get a lot more of that contrast. Yeah. yeah like, you can really push some of that and then... You do the same like so see the i think the 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 middle ground itself is like already really perfect but then i knock i knock the background back you know even further like so right oh. if if we just see like everything i selected was foreground then now everything here right i select right this would all be background yeah so again you did a good job already really yeah. simplifying like a lot of that like i'm just wondering like going like one one step further like maybe even illuminating like the high the horizon a little bit with like a bit cooler bit lighter of you know of a fog you know obviously that's not the right way to do that but just to really oversell you know some of that depth mm -hmm. in here to really push for this like trifecta you have going yeah but yeah these are the these are the hardest types of lighting to do because everything's even everything's soft but um, you did a nice job, though. Yeah, I, you I, did. I love the colors. I like the balance of, of warm and cool, the desaturated and saturated. You didn't over push it. It feels very natural. Um, I would. The only thing I would mention here, I think it's important, particularly for that main foreground character, is reference that pose. Yeah. It's very clear that you did it from your head. The proportions, the pose, the angles of the hands, the, you know, all of that is off, and it's very very noticeable. And again. You, any anybody who's doing these images, uh, number one most important thing is always reference for this kind of stuff. Because, uh, like as John Howe says, if you don't use reference, what you paint will never ring true, and that shows in this character over here, right? Yeah. Despite how beautiful it is, visually, yeah, this is a very that, good one. That, that, does, that does stand out as a bit of a sore thumb, right? All right. All right. This is next, looking good. Next batch. All right, we're back with round three. My dog apparently wants to jump in on this one. <laughs> Might be the mailman. I don't know. All right, Pope. It's the same fucking mailman too. He pisses everybody off. Everybody's he just walks around pissing off everybody's dog. You notice Bernard. that? Yeah, Bernard. So this is really cool. This is yeah. You got a very strong sense of design. There's a yeah. lot. There's an amazing graphical read to this. Yeah. My few qualms are like still overall it's maybe like a little too dark. I know for that might be a personal taste for me. I and then the 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 light is maybe a little bottom heavy like i'd probably try to in a perfect world like amputate a little off the top add a little bit a little bit more on the bottom yeah. but you know adam what do you have to add to this uh yeah absolutely um i love this very cool kind of the girlfriend of hellboy kind of mm -hmm. narrative to it what's her name again do you remember what her name is oh i don't remember her name um but that whole girl with this power and she's pushed to the point where she breaks right with their hunting her and yeah. she love that. I think that's such a clever take on it. I think a little um, more detail bringing out the girl. Yeah, uh, not only that, I think well the silhouette the silhouette in the head and the hand almost what's what's really damaging the co the composition is that bike that's overlapping her. Yeah. When you too always much. over you only overlap things when you want to deprioritize them a little bit. So make sure that I would open that put that bike off to the side and keep her open so that we know she's a focal point and and compose her a little bit better because the bike partially hides her and she's the she's the star. I the show, I like right? I like how the girl looks in all those sketches yeah. as well where you see the eyes, you could see the yeah. hands. I think the acting in that is a lot stronger. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it's just So uh, awesome job. There's our two cents, but yeah. a really cool really, really dig cool it. take. Really you know, dig like it. A, a nice yeah. modern take on it. Yeah. And you still stayed on the mark. It was original, but you still the witch hunt theme is still going on there, you know? 
Uh, Norn J A uh, Norn Brimrun. All right. Yeah, another. So this great, is this is great this is cool. I think this color is a maybe pushing things a little too much. Like the little too much blue and purple. Like it. I don't know. Like I, I try to tone down. Like to to emphasize it on these spirits, you'd want to do like less of it, like way up here, and in the the ceiling and in the back corners, for example. Yeah. I right, so see if we get this color range right, and we we grab something like way way up here, right? So see like that the area that's the area now like and all yeah. these like that's what I would try to like tone tone back or tone down like if you go under maybe even hue saturation to get you started just to to pull some of that intense color out. See how it, it's it, it's it is already starting to help some of that read yeah you know, quite a bit. And you can emphasize these bright, energetic colors, you know, where, where it matters. Yeah. I'm actually, I'm looking up some screen. It made me think, it had a kind of bit of that spooky, fun Luigi's Mansion type yeah. of vibe to it. And what I'm not, I'm just looking at, I'm looking at some of these shots on the side. It's actually predominantly desaturated with these little shots of glowy moonlight stuff mm -hmm. so like if you want that blue to glow more i would yeah like tyler's doing he's knocking back that over heavy because um, yeah basically yeah. the image is just competing so much within itself eternally it, that's what causes you know a little bit of the trouble yep i also the 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 magic hand or the magic wisp that's that's about to grab the guy's uh uh gun he's about to hit her with the gun I would. It's not clear. Yeah. That it almost looks like the the stick itself or the gun itself is is creating that magic effect. Where you'd want to wrap it around and maybe even have it pulling his arm back to show that it's yanking the gun out of his hand. Because at that point, it's kind of it's not totally clear. I love her expression though. I love yeah, I love this composition. I yeah. you know I love this setup. Uh, but it's it, just some of the the finish work like the the floor for me doesn't really work at that level it, it feels like too much of a cop out yeah. i'm just gonna paste this texture here call it a done you know call it done and i think a lot more subtlety can be brought out in a few areas yeah. with that but you know overall it's, it's a very strong piece yeah and it's a nice use of the dutch angle too it's yeah it's, that is a very right, good right use context. of that since we always talk about when that's not so much the case yeah there you go from light to dark. Hey this Thomas, is... Thomas, this is looking yeah. real good. Yeah, yes, yes. Okay, now let me just—I can see it closer up, and I can get some more details. It's kind of oh, this like kind of like Radagast kind of house, I think. Radagast the Brown. Yes. This is really cool though. You have really a lot of really strong creative language in yeah. this. It, yeah, yeah, yeah. Your comps, though, we were talking, are reading a lot better than your final yep. image. Like this got bogged down with like detail and subtle value things. So yeah, the simple thing is you could brighten the whole thing up and then knock back your shadows where they count. Yeah, that that's usually what I do anyway in in a situation like this, right? Just go to levels because like again, one simple way is to play up the atmosphere and definitely the fog with you know within the lighting, and that's a yeah. great way to bring. You know, a great way to bring a little bit more. See, like we could still knock back, you know, moving this this toggle, I believe. Like you still knock back some of that contrast, and that's what it needs. It needs like less contrast back there, and then you can keep the emphasis, you know, rightfully here in in yep. many of those cases. I sometimes even go a little further. Like if if you got like this little bit of a tingy bluish green, right, atmospheric sky, right. This is a pretty cool color, right. Yep. Just, uh, this is a really big kind of like a band-aid fit but like literally just drop in a little bit of that right and then you can you know, what is this usually like pin light works you can you can really get it to bleed through some of your shadows so see like on something like this right you can come back to this you select a uh, color range right the yeah, color range we want to grab we want to preserve a lot of the the contrast for example in there right in all these areas or i guess well, most of those, but you can come back at least like to this level here to, to get a little bit out of that, right? Color balance. You can knock in, not color balance. I'm sorry, I'm on no sleep. Uh, levels. You can you can preserve some of them, you know, very easily like this. See, like so, I'm, mm, I'm removing. That's a trick. I didn't yeah. know. You, I, I've never seen that before. That's and then like, see, that's already looking pretty good. Yeah. And then what you could do is just add basically just a bit of a blend. 
you know, to that effect overall to the, see like the darker areas. We can get back these warmer shadows, you know, where we want like that. So see, we can dial in that atmosphere yeah. on yeah. whim. And, and it's this subtlety, I think, that'll really help bring the image to life, you know, help you get it to pop in a few more instances, you know, mm -hmm. where, like see where you need it to. Yeah, so we can read that tree a little bit better, yeah. And then it's you also, it's not go. totally, the windows, I think that's windows of the tree. It's just in terms of scale, for if that's kind of a tree house, it might help just, like if I was directing this or something, it would, be, it would help to see the scale of that window so we could kind of compare the size of our char the characters in the foreground to whoever's living inside of it. Like, it's I don't know if it was intended to be further away or... Because it would suggest that whoever's living in that house is quite small in proportion. Mm -hmm. I can't get over how much I'm enjoying this vibe, though. It's kind of yeah, like yeah, uh, this is really Souls good. meets Lord of the Rings type See, of vibe. It's like right here, you like need a window, like a clear yeah. shape. Like here, clear shape. Here, clear shape. Here. And I, I'm not going in, I'm not dancing around your branches, but like these things, right, should all be, all be running together or working together. Like yeah. that and that so again the, the band-aid fix for this for me would be just running this this median sort of filter on it right just sap out uh, some of that obviously this is that's like too far but again it focused the, the on that priority so i'm going to feed that quite a bit there we go and then you could bring in right more of this atmosphere right that we talked about yeah. in, in some of these other places again you're going to enhance the depth i think and the readability you know quite a bit yeah. Oh, yeah. I would also uh, since the uh, since we're talking witch, it would help too that the guy that get a light a cast of light that glints off of the guy's crucifix, the gold crucifix. Yeah. That'll help to draw attention to the fact that he's trying to this purge dude, of, of a demon essentially. These right? guys are all about equal detail. I would definitely de-emphasize these ones off to the left. Yeah. In the front, and then definitely put some put some glory on the know, priest. Yeah. Put some glory on the priest, but you know, the, although other than that, Thomas, like this is coming out really great. I really enjoy looking at it. <laughs> Have them all holding hands, kumbaya, yeah. my lord. <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah. That's how they used to. That's the truth. So they used that that song in witch hunts. But yeah, awesome stuff. Now look at this one, man. Dog this, and like, this looks like a historical painting here. Yeah, this is cool. This Very is kind of classy feel to it. Dog end. This is dramatic as hell. I love it. Uh, I yeah. probably like a few little things that stick out to me. Like I de-emphasize some of these shapes and just simplify it because I mean, this is this is a complex, challenging scene, right? So, like we don't need all those branches like up there. They're just crowding things. Have the guy. Have your. You have your shape there. See, like, do you think it needs this tree? Like, I don't think this scene benefits from this tree totally like no it's been yetting it a bit i guess but yeah but it's like again it's effect at the end of the day like it it's doing enough you're doing enough to yeah. frame and it's just crowding it um yeah. like i would say if you had a very wide shot you know where you're you're kind of showing more of this environment then yeah but since you're you're you know we're working within a it's already a tight camera yeah, yeah we don't, we don't need to get it so much yeah just simplify it and then maybe exaggerate some of the elements that you already have so you can keep all these trees in the background. They work a lot better there. Yeah. I'd also be careful with the black on black on black, the, the black shadow under mm -hmm. the woman, the black horse, the black shadow. Yeah. There's a lot of that. And uh, it's not totally clear that that's a woman. Uh, I almost interpret that as being a guy at first. So we need to have some kind of a visual clue that that was a bit more of a feminine form to, inf to show us that it's a witch, right? Um, that, would, that would also help, I find. Yeah, this, yeah, for me, it, like, your composition overall, it, like, some subtle fixes here works really good, it, it, but it is the colors that need, like, a lot of attention. Like, color lives and breathes in the shadows, and you've completely sapped them with any amount of life. Yeah. And I think playing that up, you know, in the future would do this great justice. Yeah. But, yeah, this is awesome. I mean, it yeah. looks accurate. It's on point with the theme. Really on point, yeah. It's it's probably one of the most spot-on ones we've seen so far. Hey, John John Wing is back. Yeah. What do we got here? He's out for blood. He's out for blood. Let's have a look. Very nice. 
Very Good. blue. John, man. John, your game just damn. <laughs> it just keeps going up. It's crazy. Let me look at this. You see, that's the problem. It, it doesn't read well when it's far away. A little bit. He's eh? got a lot like of nice things going on, but it's Yeah. You got to make some compromises. Like it's like you that this is the focal area, right? I get it around this this dead character here, but yeah. I feel like there's so much more important things besides this. Is like uh, the set dressing, right? This is a prop, right. and the highest amount of emphasis. Like every every compositional element, and in, including value, is often really just pointing right to this. Yeah, but yeah, like, true, this right? is more important. This is more important, but nothing's emphasizing almost either of those. Yeah. That's my deal with it, John. Now, just from a for compositionally speaking, there's a little bit of you you because you created that archway of trees which composes the witch beautifully, you try to cram too much into that little space. And if I what I would have done is open up that Yeah, opening, I would 100% so lose she this. Could extend herself? Yeah, so she could extend her arm out to create a bit more separate, so it's, you don't have two characters clumped together. And it and emphasize the fact that she's the one sapping the energy of the warrior in the foreground because it's it almost looks like he's praying to her yeah. almost like he's actually kneeling to pray where my guess is she's she, there he's trying to go there to defeat her but she's exsanguinating right or she's draining a soul and, or something like that and so. i love this warm light adam that's uh, illuminating yeah. you know at least softly in the front like yeah. there's some torches put down or like that she burned a sense. village and yeah but that's something like Dude, 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 utilize that. Bring that yep. all in. Kill this. It gets like the use of color here is amazing. This turns yep. to a monochromatic um, fest so quickly. Like when you can use the subtlety that here to really bring your co your focal point to life, yeah, it's a missed opportunity. Yep. Yeah. But subtle details. The other thing, just to, just from an anatomical perspective, his wrist is up. The wrist is wider. It's it's wider on the top and bottom. It's thinner on the side. So if his wrist is like this, think of more of an oval shape because it the it kind of it's too circular. His bracer is a little bit too circular at the wrist. You should widen it a bit. It should be the almost the width of his hand. All right, guys, we opened up the final uh, bits, and yeah, these are all very strong. We're looking forward to talking about these. So uh, let's just I'm gonna stop with Addison here. This is really cool. I even got a chance. Yeah, see, really nice tight rendering. Mm -hmm. and a yeah. lot of this wow so that's like a a witch hunt but uh you converted it all to mice which you know that works i think sure now here's an, a little issue is the fact that you have zoomed the camera out of the shot out of the main the main focal point is that guy who's jumping to he's in jumping swing yep. the light is definitely directing us to the right spot but the characters are so tiny on the screen that they're pixels and in height and that prevents us from really i have a question adam sucked into the image. how much better would this be if it literally was like a big version of this like yeah. how much better would it be that's all and all of that beautiful work right and then that's, and then you bump the detail up of this and make it like a much larger painting yeah you know, ditch the ditch the foreground be so Which is much better. Sad because it's beautiful, but or just move it up into frame a little bit more, kind of compress your image a little bit more. Although compositionally, this is beautiful read. Because again, uh, the, the problem though, when you have something like this, when it is, it, it doesn't, it doesn't sell the image when it's like at a thumbnail size. Because like, oh, yeah. like, what's going on? You just see this shape, right? Yeah. That shape right there, and and unfortunately that, but that's it. But that's that's the designing principle of your image. Yeah, and, you know, it's a value pattern. So even though a lot of lines work, they flow, and but this is almost like, yeah, it's it's tough because this whole shape, right? It just reads so strong, and it yep. de-emphasizes the importance of what what's going on here. I hope that That's makes awesome, sense. Right? I hope that makes sense, as The expression is uh, fill the frame with that which you love. It's a photography expression, basically meaning frame the thing that's important, that matters, that makes you feel something, and the active area is the action, right? The mice, not so much. So you want to make sure to bring that camera in as close as you can to the characters so you can identify with them, so you can see their expressions, that kind of stuff. But yeah, this yeah. is, you know, well, well crafted. A lot of nice technical skill, yeah. you know, uh, being put on here. Yeah, it's really beautiful. I have to say the colors are gorgeous, too. Uh, Will. Will. I think your composition, is, again, is very strong. You have nice, clear 
uh, shapes of light in dark. You you're using yep. color, color temperature pretty well, but yep. I, I think for me personally, it's just it just at this level that you're already at with very clean shapes, very clean edges, nice compositional use. It, but it looks like it could use from more brushwork or mm. more you know like an up in detail in some of like the fabrics, the dirt, the grime on the ground. You know, almost like a little too orange. I would knock that back just like a little bit. Mm-hmm. And uh, and then the background still feels a little unfinished. This is like a giant block that has a couple indications of like, okay, maybe that's a building. It doesn't read right. really as a building. Right. What's your take, Adam? Um, my take is there's a str- there's this you your strength is your rendering and your lighting. You are a light artist. You you're kind of fall into that Sam Nielsen category that loves light. And I, I can very much identify with that. I love light too. Um, I'd say what you'd benefit from is referencing a little bit, right? So to get the proportions and the poses, make them feel a little bit more natural. But more importantly, don't, don't sculpt and light your characters at the expense of acting. So make sure that the performance, the positions, the body language, the facial expressions, that's what people are really identifying with. The visual artistry of it is secondary. So I would don't I would say you're ready at this level of rendering to start focusing on the design and the and the expression and gesture a little bit more. That's my that would be my piece of advice. Yeah, I'm just trying to knock back some of these elements even add more depth yeah you know just in balancing out the set the orange was like a little bit too intense yeah. um so I, again i think with your design skills as strong as they already are going now and adding layers of subtlety to that you know it's going to take you pretty far yep and of course not only detail not only referencing and researching some of the the posing and stuff like that like like adam said which you know it's pretty good overall definitely like on the buildings like a lot yeah. of that still feels very made up. Um, but yeah, very good. Very good mm-hmm. stuff. Uh, now, for some of these ones that remained, I, I wanted to make a point because we always talk about pushing brushwork. You know, in some certain cases, we're like, oh, you got to render this more. Or, you know, the fluidity and the internal consistency. These are terms yep. we toss around a lot. So I wanted, like, these two, right, on the um, Kai's and. Um, Justin's right both pretty much on point when you look at them for the rendering right like yeah. really nicely uh, thoroughly executed like a high density of brushwork you know, very internally you know consistent you know for the most part overall um, the very good thing to look for right so then when you when you have that and this is what I, we were gonna say anyway with you know pretty much these three uh, right here is like when you have them right like a, a piece like uh, Rays here, right? When you put it between them, and this is what you'd want to do if, if you're not sure where to push this further. You surround it by artwork that's in the same genre, mm-hmm. uh, in the same theme, and you see how it fits. Like, go one for one, like for your faces, you know, for your character, uh, for your clothing, lighting, and stuff. It's see if it's matching where, you know, it's not, and then start to ask yourself the questions. Okay, like, yeah, like my face isn't working enough then why isn't it working is it the lighting is it the tone is it the expression and you start to you know you you go down that rabbit hole to start to fix yeah. what what is not working because again i do like the composition I, I think your storytelling and i'm going to jump around to some of these now right on raises it's all there but at this stage the only place left for you to go really is to start cleaning this up and start to turn this color sketch into a final illustration a final painting and i just wanted to show you by surrounding it by these two which are quite a bit more um polished to give you an example of you know where things are working and where things are not working as much the the pattern back here too uh, well while i'm on yours see this is a lot a lot more subtle in kai's and these are all very similar same colors same fairly uh, similar setup just different uh the p- different positioning of the actors but you see like the pattern is you've you've blotted it out a hundred percent on the light value basically and that's a lot of contrast and that contrast is competing and takes away from it overemphasizes everything that you have going on right here yeah whereas yeah. like this this is a much more subtle and that's why it worked and even in justin's here right a lot more subtle with the value differences uh, and, and that's what you want to work on is that that value structure in terms of the overall design. see like even here I think it works a little better because it it's, it feels a little more subtle 
Um, and Adam, anything you want to add to anything I just rambled on about? No, not at all. I, you, you pretty much hit on every, every, everything and more. So uh, I, I, I don't need to throw anything on the and, 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 and I'm not trying to just pick. I'm not trying to pick on uh, no, Ray's a- here, but like the same thing with even like Julie's. Like again, an awesome composition. I love the storytelling, but if uh, when I push comes to shove, like what I'd love to see for this, like you know, is this going to make a gorgeous wallpaper? And mm-hmm. it's like no, because it still feels very rough in terms of the brushwork and a lot of the little places, the places yep. where it counts, the hands, the faces, the materials, and the clothing. This stuff now you need to go at another level for referencing and research to start bringing it up. Yep. Like even like when you have like the the hat and the and the, the arm itself, right? At the end of the day, this is nothing more than a cylinder. If you're drowning out and going with an overall warm keyed palette, you know that's absolutely fine. But what you could do, go with like a subtle bit of a, a bluer sort of very dark shape right here. You know, very neutral. Mm. Neutrals yeah. are or like, and you could start to pull some of the highlights to sell this as a form. You know, like particularly like on the the back here. And it, basically, the goal would be to make it look th- very three dimensional. Yep. So see otherwise, this? it's just a flat. It's just a flat two dimensional surface without that light, right? And and on the back, you know, use warm and cool neutrals, but you just don't want everything so heavy warm. And this is something that's come up, not just with yours, Julie, but like a lot. This particular challenge is the balancing of color temperature, you know, in in your images. Mm-hmm. Right, so again, it just takes a delicate game of blending, which um, you know, not going to get into right now. But seamless, kind of like you have a lot of nice things going on already. Use your neutrals, your your best friend. Like every color in this, I mean, this is even this, which is like a white, right, and a gray. They're very intense, um, and I think your work in particular, you know, it's going to benefit once you learn to master these neutrals to really. Uh, communicate between all these intense areas of color mm-hmm. yeah i'd say narratively um julie's piece from a traditional storytelling perspective this is literally a historical illustration it's insane it's awesome Salem. like julie did well, such an amazing job on you this be more, and compositionally you really got brought us you see how this is a good example you see how we're brought right into the action where we're, we're we are there, a member active, on stage participant in this rather than taking the drone view be careful with the drone view. it's like that's more of an establishing shot more thing but you were more entertained by being a part of the action right and this camera really brings us into the crowd which is wonderful yes, and yeah. you can see how that allows us to see the expressions and see that woman's recoiling from the hit right that kind of idea we really get to uh yeah and that a guy they go burn the witch the guy with the goatee thing that's excellent Really yeah, the, excellent. There, there is a lot of excellence that you have going on here, yeah. Julie. I'm trying to just neutralize, to play up a little bit more subtlety in some of the areas. See, like yeah, you can make a little bit too. Yeah, some of these warm high, from like the sun setting back here, right? You can feel the warmth on them. Again, yeah. like like uh, some of the other pieces when you dial down and use more neutrals to your advantage. Yeah, it'll really work. Like for example, like the sleeve under here would look. I would say probably better if you're using a color a lot more like in this range to so see how like the coolness of this gray is playing up with the warms of all these grays. Yeah. And this is a warm color. Like I am in a deep orangey yellow feel, but this feels so cool. It feels almost like a blue, right? Yeah. Cause it's all contextual, right? And you have all these warm tones here. And when you start to apply the subtlety of treatment to not only your materials, you know, but uh, to your final pass and your brushwork, it, it's going to make your image absolutely come to life. Like, I would love to see you give this like a whole other pass, utilizing neutrals, getting in there, uh, you know, polishing these faces, because this is going to be fantastic. Right, playing up a lot of those. Yeah. But that's that's there. Uh, what would you say? Because uh, I, I was giving Justin feedback during uh, the hangout on Monday, I, so I'm sure he'd love your input on this. Um, okay. Well, I'm, I'm I walk into this piece and I'm thinking to myself, what's going on in this shot? I can see the first thing that jumps out at me is the uh, the uh, Carl Drogo guy with the gun. I like that this the gun spin. We have a very classical fairy tale type of landscape, but with the guy with the gun, really kind of the juxtaposition is kind of interesting. Um, um, and I walk in and I see the guys pointing the gun at the woman. She's quietly, patiently waiting her execution. 
Yeah. Um, and there's her husband who's got his hands, her husband or a lover who's, you can see that association with his expression and with the fact that you matched the colors, the white and white. Very smart move. I would add, what's selling the story? The, what's selling the emotional impact of the story is the husband, not her. She's the recipient, but he's the supporting actor, like the mm -hmm. Samwise Gamgee. His tragedy, his tragic expression is telling us, the audience, what to feel about her, right? She's the one that's highlight, though. I would definitely make sure to put light on him and highlight yeah. him so that we can feel his panic. And, and, and that's what I'm doing, Adam. I'm trying to de-emphasize all of this uh, attention that's going to her and on her. the lower floor. Like it, it definitely needs to be brought to this and guy. Yeah. The other uh, thing is the fact that he's kind of crammed between yeah, the tree and the rocks is a little claustrophobic. I would get rid of that tree behind him and move them over so that they were framed between the gunner and the woman. Because right now he's kind of like squeezed in behind the the rocks and it doesn't seem to be. So, so you you're out. saying you'd have this tree removed? Yeah, yeah. I would so just, I, right, we'll just go right. in with something. Right, something like this. We'll just do a quick doctor fix here. Do distant yeah. trees, if anything, like just subtle. Yeah, yeah. Softer, it's, it's subtle forests. And move him over and frame him in that opening because he is he is the emotional pitch of this of this piece. And move him and the guy holding his hand. Yeah, you know, I didn't think of that. That 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 works, you know, you really go. well. That balances it a bit better. And, and then you could have this guy's hand out and on yeah. him, way more emphasized, right? Like there that you go. guy there, right? And then of course you'll see a nice little bit of negative space, right? And then we have all that filled in. Ah, uh, this is such a good idea, Adam. Such a good idea. Yeah. And that to me, it, a good reference for that kind of an emotion. You almost, almost nailed the emotional anguish. You really did good to do a good job. I would look at that scene of Eowyn's uh, brother when she thinks that she's found Eowyn dead on the battlefield. That scene, I just watched that performance and my eyes well up with tears. That when he sees her on the battlefield and he runs, he pulls off his helmet, he goes, no! And he screams and he grabs her and starts to cradle yeah. her. Um, that, think like that, because that will sell the whole piece. That will make everybody get, look at the piece and go, <clears throat> and gasp at what's happening because you're right on the cusp. Adam, and I do this. There's a lot of rock, you know, and there's a lot yeah. of tree over here. Let's, like, really put the emphasis, you know, right here. And yeah. see, and I think cropping it also will de-emphasize her a little bit and then bring it back to him. Yeah, but we still push them into the third, yeah. Look at that, yeah. Perfect. A lot more kind of intense of a scene now. Very good, Justin. Yeah, really nice, man. And another very original take on the whole witch idea. I love that. She's a good witch. Huh? Are we, we only got one left? Oh, no. We well, that, well I want, you we weigh in on high? Kai's. I believe I, I was helping. We were talking with Kai's in the hangout. And yeah. then we'll get to uh, Juan's. Sure. So very Lord of the Rings feel to it. Loving yeah, again, it. Ex excellently executed. I think some of these shapes and silhouettes, like with the tree, like a little bit of the, the edges and shapes do get a little lost for me, and yeah. I'd, I'd clarify a little more of that. But, I mean, the, the, the coloring, right, and the skin tone density and the referencing, with the, like, really, really good. Yeah. I mean, look at the intensity on those expressions. Like, yeah. Christ, you know? Yeah. Really good stuff. You can push an expression, by the way, particularly when you're dealing in the dark, is putting a little bit more catch light in the eye. I have a little... That little catch light really helps, the, especially the girl who's <clears throat> hold, being held back from screaming because she's in a panic. Um, I would say, tell me what you think of this, Tyler. I'm thinking that the hunters, are it, the, the, they're too passive. They're too neutral. And they're just kind of having a leisurely stroll. I would rather, if I really wanted to sell the idea that they're hunting, I would have I'd even hold the one even having a dog on a leash as well. Yeah. Yeah. But the thing for me that sticks out for this that I would fix as well is like there's two or two to three very loud shapes and areas. That's this. Right. Yeah. That's this. And that's this. It, they're the loudest things because there's the highest con contrast and value yeah. is the most bold design decision to do. And you're yeah. way too much emphasis here. Not as much here. Yeah. And I'd re I'd recompose it so that the emphasis is all on them. And these are the, the supporting, you know, actors just kind of like a part of that. Yeah. Because, like, there's so much hard work, you know, and effort put into here. So it's like, I'd, 
I'd widen it a bit and then show hunters passively passing, like put the whole tree down, show a couple silhouettes of hunters walking down a path over there as well. It's a counterweight. Yeah. Um, and then of course de-emphasize the forest floor because it's just it's too much and it's taking everything from them. Mm-hmm. But Plus you got, if you look to you got that foreground branch that's overlapping the brown cloak on the guy in the midground, so it both cancels yes. him out and creates a bit of a color value. Yeah, it's a we- it's a weird little thing that again I think with yeah. this it'd be better without it. Or move you, it over. Yeah, you to, could have to, to some passive point. trees like, but that's like a crook. I don't know. I'd have like more natural, yeah, looking thicket. Without the, you know, without all that, you know, just yeah. wider variety, make it feel a little more chaotic. But yeah, yeah. that's just it, the way it's doing that, the way it's touching him, it's all distracting. Yeah, and it's highlighted by the shape right here as well, which you don't want. But really good, Kai. Yeah, beautiful. The rendering uh, is just gorgeous. All right, right here. Juan Pedro Ramos. Yeah, awesome. Oh, well, you're you you're, on, you're on point with theme and subject. Right uh, on the point composition is okay. pretty good too you know what i would do as well like you have so much space up here is yeah. i would at least silhouette like some buildings to yep. some degree like in the background like just the, you just have to hint yeah. you don't yep. need to yep. overdo yep. it but like a little bit because you have a it's a lot of space to fill and that's what that's what we're here for filling the space yeah. with tools and design right um, the other thing too is that uh, it wasn't until when Tyler zoomed in that I could really identify with the crowd. I saw the I saw the woman on the uh, on the uh, uh, on the pyre, but um, uh, the all of these all of these uh, villagers and the priest, I guess I'm not sure who I'm looking at off in the distance. Uh, the pointing at her, I would have the one pointing and the one accusing up in the foreground to balance the weight of her on the other side. Although you're doing that kind of with the building now. But bring that woman pointing, I would scale her up and bring her close to the camera so that she was really yeah. identified with woman going, witch, ban the witch, and really see, get her cr- cr- uh, the very crotchety kind of wicked accusing look on her face, you know? No, I agree. Yeah. On her and, yeah, that kind of thing. Think of it like, like Cersei from the, you know, shame scene with Cersei. When they were the people up in her face, spitting in her face and throwing things at her and shit like that. You want to kind of feel that. You want to feel that accusing, but they all kind of just feel like this passive crowd, just casually eating their popcorn and watching a woman burn to death. You know? See, I just try using the rule of odds. You know, odd number of buildings, add depth, add sandwich, take up space. Yeah, that um, a lot too. And help frame, right? We're always framing your subject. Yeah. Because you have beautiful, delicate light, right? This is what it looks like, guys, when you use a nice balance of cools yeah. and warms coming together in harmony and by that extension no neutrals loads of neutrals my least favorite thing is i think uh, that the fire does feel like uh, i'd work that brushwork a little more it, f- it does feel a little heavy and a little yeah. a little rough in places and, and that and, and some of the characters but i mean you've nailed the lighting you nailed the composition storytelling there's so much you've got right so yeah. awesome job juan yeah really nice very very nice oh, all right. All, right, all right, guys, thank you for joining us. These are our favorites. We decided to break it up into uh, technical and storytelling. So we were unanimously agreeing that this is our favorite from a storytelling perspective was Julie's. You know, phenomenal job. And I think our favorite for the overall like uh, like technical package and the storytelling was going to uh, Thomas with, yeah. with a pretty much on par, if not runner up with, with Kai here. Yeah. With, with, I mean, it's hard to ignore uh, the expressions and the, the delicacy uh, you know that Kai did in the, in the expressions yeah. and everything like that, but like overall, like uh, compositionally and in mood, I think we both liked Thomas's a little bit more. Yeah. So great job, guys! Uh, I'll be with you shortly for details on the next challenge. Thank you for joining me. Congratulations! Adam. Beautiful work. Thank you. Thank you, Tyler. Hello, everybody. So, what I have up on screen for the next challenge is going to be a reference board. You can uh, download it uh, for your own personal use uh, from the link below. So the theme and the title of the next challenge is Journey to the uh, Garden of the Summer Goddess. A little bit of a, a mouthful, but let, let's get creative with this. Uh, if you're going to do an environment uh, approach to this, uh, think of something lush, think of something ancient and tropical. 
Uh, think of something that has a bit of mis uh, mystery to it. If you're going to approach this more from a character design, uh, let's see at least minimum three to five character designs in a lineup, something that would aesthetically fit this uh, theme. And if you're doing an illustration, you can take various cues from the images presented here, draw, you know, draw the journey. Um, it should be in fairly similar environments uh, that we see here. And this is really going to be uh, not, it's going to be about putting multiple uses of reference into practice. And your vision will kind of come out with how you interpret those references and, of course, how you combine them uh, with all the fundamentals and things like that. So this will be due in approximately four to six weeks, you know, from the time of this video to see when it was posted. And then, um, yeah, if you're having doubts about if you're on point with things, just, just post it in the Discord and see uh, what the community thinks. All right. Take care.